Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. In this video, we're going to solve a force analysis problem of a field fabricated floor joist constructed by nailing together two boards to help you prepare for the PE exam. This episode is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and the passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. This week's problem was created and solved by Enrique Ivers, an engineer in training. Enrique, take it away. In this statics problem, we're shown a field fabricated joist that is constructed by nailing together two boards. The nails are spaced six inches apart and the joist is subjected to a transverse shear force of one kip. We're then asked, what is the maximum shear force in each nail and provided the following options? A, 925 pounds, B, 1,025 pounds, C, 1,125 pounds, and D, 1,225 pounds. Our first step to solving this problem should be to assign a datum at the bottom edge of the section, the joist. So at the bottom edge of the one and a half inch by five and a half inch board to be our neutral axis. From there, we can calculate the Y coordinate of the centroid Y bar. The PE handbook is very useful here. If we look at the table of contents in the PE handbook, we see sections 1.5.6 titled Centroids of Masses, Areas, Lengths, and Volumes, as well as section 1.5.7 titled Moment of Inertia. Both of these will be good references for modeling this problem. Referencing the PE handbook, we have the following equation. Y bar equals sigma Y sub I times a sub i divided by sigma a sub i. In order to approach this problem, we need to separate the joist into two shapes, the top rectangle, shown in yellow, and the bottom rectangle, shown in green. These are our two boards that are nailed together. y sub i is the distance in the y direction from the datum that we assigned and is shown in the graphic to the right. A sub i is the area of the section. We then substitute in our values for each section, sigma signifying that we need to sum the values for both sections. So for the green section, y sub i is 2.75 inches. This is one half of the five and a half inch height of the board. For the yellow section, this is six and a quarter inches. So we calculate the areas of these two sections. The green section is calculated by multiplying one and a half inch by five and a half inches. And the yellow section is calculated by multiplying one and a half inch by seven and one quarter inches. So we begin by simplifying the equation. And we simplify until we find that Y bar is 4.740 inches. Thus, the Y coordinate of the centroid is 4.740 inches above our neutral axis, which is at the base of the green board. From there, we need to calculate the centroidal moment of inertia, which is denoted by capital I sub XC. This equation is given in the PE handbook. We're finding the sum of the two sections where B is the base width of the section, H is the height of the section, and D is the distance between the Y coordinate of the centroid that we just calculated and the center of the individual section. So as we solve for the green section, we substitute in our values and we note again that D is the distance between the Y coordinate of the centroid that we just calculated, that is the 4.740 inches and the center of the individual section. 
simplifying, we find that the centroidal moment of inertia for the green section is 53.468 quartic inches, and we repeat the process for the yellow section. So for the yellow section, we substitute in our values again. We note once again that d is the distance between the y-coordinate of the centroid that we calculated earlier and the center of the individual section, so the center of the yellow section this time. We must take into account the five and a half inch distant that is resultant from the green board. So it's the full height of the green board, the five and a half inches, plus the midpoint of the yellow board, so half of the thickness of the yellow board. So simplifying, we find that the centroidal moment of inertia for the yellow section is 26.835 quartic inches, and we can find the centroidal moment of inertia for the entire assembly by summing the values for the green and yellow sections. So summing the 53.468 quartic inches that we calculated for the centroidal moment of inertia for the green section with the 26.835 quartic inches that we just solved uh, for the yellow section. From there, uh, we calculate that to be 80.303 quartic inches, and we now need to find the first moment of the top flange in yellow around the centroidal axis. So we can model this by the equation Q equaling the product of B, H, and D. Again, remember that uh, D is the distance between the y-coordinate of the centroid that we calculated, uh, B being the base width of the section, and H being the height of the section. So substituting in our values and simplifying, we have a value of 16.421 cubic inches. We can now use the shear stress equation to calculate the shear stress, tau, at the interface between the two boards. V is equal to the transfer shear force, that is the one kip. Q is equal to the first moment of area, which is the section above the area of interest. I is equal to the moment of inertia, and B is equal to the width of the section. So we know what all four of these values are. V is one kip that was given to us in the problem statement, that is the transfer shear force, and one kip is 1,000 pounds of force. Q we calculated to be 16.421 cubic inches, and I we calculated uh, the total sum to be 80.303 quartic inches, and B is the width of the section uh, of the material that is interfacing with each other, so that is one and a half inches. Simplifying, we find that tau is 136.33 pounds per square inch, and this is the total shear stress. So we need to find the shear force incident to each nail with the six inch spacing. So V sub nail is the shear force incident to each nail, and tau is the shear stress that we calculated above to be 136.33 PSI. So note that this stress is in PSI, or pounds per square inch, which is pounds over an area. So we need to convert this to a linear force, because when we think about the nails, we think about them being points and not taking up an area. So we multiply the stress by the contact width, which is one and a half inches. So with that, we know that our spacing S is six inches. We can substitute in those values and we calculate the maximum force experienced by each nail to be 1,226.97 pounds. Referencing our answer choices, we see that this is most close to answer D, 1,225 pounds, so we select it as the correct answer. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will solve more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, I encourage you to ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to you. 
Let me know if there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or a question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week.